I'd like to welcome you today to our devotional study through the book of Exodus. And I invite you to come with me, if you would, to Exodus chapter 3. And uh, God is in the process of getting Moses' attention and uh, reminding him that he is not only the chosen deliverer for the nation of Israel, but that now is the time for him to go. And it's interesting, and we're going to be getting into this tomorrow, but it's interesting that 40 years earlier, Moses was was uh, anxious to go. And uh, he was anxious to be delivered, but it was not the right time. It was not God's time. And now that God says to Moses here, Moses, now it's time. Moses begins to make excuses as to why he cannot go and why he should not be the man and how there has to be somebody else that is better. And, and it's very interesting that uh, that is the case. And we'll look at some of those excuses that Moses has uh, as we begin to journey through that section tomorrow. But we notice here that God is speaking to Moses out of the burning bush and he promises victory in these verses that we are looking at today. Notice in Exodus chapter 3, and in verse 7 it says, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land and a large and unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto a place of the Canaanites and the Higites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. As we move in through these verses, one of the first things we notice is the compassion of our Lord. But as we come into these, friends, by way of application for us today, Israel is, is going through a difficult time. They are facing bondage. They're facing oppression. Things are going to get worse before they're ultimately delivered. And uh, I'm sure that there were times, and you can see as you read through this text, that they that there were times that they wondered, does God hear? Is God working? Does God know what's going on? And before we get too hard on them for having that kind of an attitude, do we not have the exact same attitude sometimes in our life? We go through the difficulties or the trials of life and sometimes we can doubt God's love for us. We can doubt whether he is really an ever-present help in trouble. We can doubt if he is there. And we may even begin to question, God, where are you and what are you doing? And and we may question his activity. But friends, we must understand that he is always at work, but he does not work according to our time frame, that he works according to his time frame. And that he knows what is best and that he does what is best. Now, with that in mind, let's notice the compassion of the Lord in verses 7 and 8. It says, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the, uh, the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Higites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Friend, in our day, the world, that is Egypt, has multitudes in the bondage, in bondage today. People in our world today are in bondage to immorality, to drunkenness, to drugs, to the lusts of the flesh. And the truth of the matter is that they need deliverance and God is the only one who can bring deliverance to them. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and in verse 26, we find these words. It says, well, let's go back to verse 25 of 2 Timothy 2. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. That's a very interesting phrase there. He says, they oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance, 
to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Friends, God is the only one who can recover us out of the snare of the devil. He is the only one that can deliver us from the bondage of this world. And as we move through Exodus chapter 3 and we see what God does for the nation of Israel, it's a wonderful picture of what God can do for us. Notice what he says here. Notice how there is concern and compassion in these verses. First of all, it says in verse 7, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. As we hear this idea of him seeing their affliction, it reminds us that we have a God who is concerned with the details of life, that he is concerned with what we are going through. But not only does he say, I've seen their affliction, he goes on to say, and I've heard their cry by reason of their taskmaster. So, not only is he concerned, but praise God, we serve a God that is compassionate. Compassion is love in action. And, and he not only sees us, he not only loves us, but praise God, he is the one that can do something about the situations of life that we find ourselves in. Then he also says in the end of the verse 7, for I know their sorrows. Friends, he is charitable. Praise God for the love of God that is shown toward us, not only in salvation, but in the way that he conducts our, himself toward us on a daily basis. And then he says in the beginning of verse 8, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Friends, he's considerate. He not only knows our situation, but he is the one who can do something about it. So we see his fourfold compassion here, but there's also a threefold promise. He says in verse 8, I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, to bring them up out of the land onto a good land and a large, onto a land flowing with milk and honey. Notice that God is positive of what he will do here. There are no ifs in this verse. There are no maybes in this verse. There are no perhaps in this verse. Because, friends, ifs and maybes and perhaps are not in God's vocabulary. And God says, first of all, that he is going to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Uh, we know that the Egyptians have had them in slavery. They have been treating them very roughly, as we're going to see in future chapters. And God says, I'm going to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. But then secondly, to bring them uh, up out of the land, uh, out of that land. Um, so he says, I'm not only going to deliver them from the Egyptians, I'm going to bring them up out of Egypt. And then he says, I'm going to bring them into king and notice to bring them up out of that land onto a good, onto a good land and a large, onto a land flowing with milk and honey, onto the land of the Canaanites and the Higites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Notice in advance, God says, I'm not only going to bring them out of Egypt, but I'm going to bring them into the land of Canaan. Now, that's important for us to realize and understand because they're going to spend a lot of time in the wilderness. God has brought them out of Egypt, or he's going to bring them out of Egypt, that he might bring them into the promised land. Friends, what a wonderful picture of us as believers. God did not just save us out of Egypt, but friends, he's going to deliver us to our heavenly home. God did not just deliver us out of Egypt, but he delivered us out of the bondage of Egypt. And God's desire is that we would not live in sin, and that sin would not have dominion over us. He brought us out that he might bring us in. Then in verses 9 and 10, we see the call of Moses. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, and notice this, I will send thee. Notice it's not Moses sending himself. Moses isn't going according to his time frame. He's going according to God's time frame. God says, Moses, I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Friends, God always finishes what he sets out to do. Moses must have been surprised that God would call him. After all, he had failed in delivering them 40 years before when Moses wanted to do it on his time frame. But now God calls Moses according to the time frame of God. And he says, Moses, it's time. It's time for you to go to the land of Egypt.
Now, 40 years earlier, Moses was anxious to do this. What is his reply this time? Well, we'll begin to look at that in the next devotional day that we have together. Have a great day.